Episode 39, The Arrogant Female Tiger. Roger then forcefully pried apart Blair's legs and stuffed the cotton into that little underwear made from snakeskin despite her resistance. Blair exploded with anger. After Roger released her, she kicked at Roger's chest. Scram! As Roger was strong and powerful, not only did Blair not manage to kick him away, but she also felt the impact of the counterforce instead. Roger hurriedly helped her up and said glumly, Don't abandon me. Blair clamped her legs together and turned her head away. Get out! Roger remained silent for a good while before he lowered his voice and said, I'll go and fetch you water to wash your hands, then go out to hunt. What flavor do you want your barbecued meat to be? Anything, Blair said with her back facing him. However, hearing his footsteps as he left, she didn't have the heart to let him leave like that. She added, You need to remove the bee stings from your body. Go and have the doctor look at it. Roger's face instantly lit up. He puffed up his strong chest and said, I'm fine. My skin is thick and I'm not afraid of pain. Although Roger was to be blamed for insisting that she could only mate with him in the past, Blair still cared about him. Now that she had a mate, she didn't want him anymore. Blair said nothing. Only after Roger came over with a stone basin filled with water did she wash her hands and say to him, Come here, I'll help you squeeze out the pricks. There were hundreds of bee stings on Roger's body. It had only been a short while, but the swelling had already subsided. Now there was only a red spot in the center of each swell with a prick sticking out from each of them. Roger appeared overwhelmed with honor. He couldn't bear to reject Blair's gentleness, so he sat down next to her. You're truly wonderful. You only got stung because you were trying to find me some honey. How could I leave you alone? Blair said grudgingly as she edged closer to Roger's face and began to pick out the pricks. Perhaps because Roger really had thick skin, these pricks didn't go all the way in and a long section was left outside. Blair only had to pinch with two fingers and the prick easily came out. It took Blair about half an hour before she removed all the pricks and applied honey to the spots where he was stung. Feels much better. Like a big cat, Roger shook his muscular body, then rubbed his forehead against Blair's forehead and said, Blair, I'm going out to hunt now. Roger excitedly transformed into a leopard and went out. Blair fell onto the pile of grass, the painful sensation in her tummy more tolerable now. She began to contemplate her life in the future. Since there was no possibility of a future with Roger, she could no longer depend on him to take care of her. What could she do to become independent in this world? Plant crops? Even beast men died from growing crops, much less her who had no source of food to begin with. She wouldn't survive while waiting for the crops to be harvested. But she couldn't hunt either. If she went into the forest, she would likely be eaten alive by the wild animals or be abducted by another feral beast. Wait a minute. Fish. She could fish. Perhaps she could use the cooked fish to exchange for other food with the beast men. But where was she going to stay? Just as Blair was deep in thought, Roger returned. Blair, I went to Camel Hump Valley on the way to hunt and brought your bag back. Roger put on a skirt and, holding a roasted field mouse in one hand and Blair's canvas bag in the other, said with a smile, Let's live in the city of Beastmen in the future. Blair hurriedly said, Quickly hand me my bag. This bag that she brought with her from Earth gave her a warm and familiar feeling. Roger eagerly handed the bag and food to Blair. Hurry up and eat. You've become so much thinner. Holding the roast meat in one hand, Blair retrieved her palm-sized mirror from her bag and, after checking out her reflection, said happily, I do look thinner. Blair scratched some mud off her face and that patch of skin instantly felt refreshed. She said with a sigh, Will I be disfigured from plastering mud on my face every day? Roger sniffed Blair's face. 
The smell of the behemoth egg has become much fainter. Wash your face and I'll sniff again. Blair was happy to hear that. She quickly handed the roasted meat to Roger, then cleansed her face with water. How is it? Sniff it. Blair edged her face closer to Roger's nose. A sweet scent entered Roger's nostrils, making his heart run wild. He stuck out his tongue and licked her face. It's sweet. Blair glared at him. It was only then that Roger replied to her seriously. It's very faint now. The horde of behemoths is far away from us and won't be able to detect the smell. What about my hair? Blair touched her nylon rope-like ponytail. The mud had dried and her bunched up hair felt dry and tough. The scent lingering on your hair is the strongest. Better not risk it, Roger said. Blair shrugged. Then forget it. Safety matters most. Blair carefully gazed at her skin. Thankfully, it was just slightly reddened and wasn't damaged. She took out her cosmetics and began dotting her face with black dots while Roger tore off the roasted meat and fed her slice by slice. The roars of tigers could be heard from outside, and a strong sense of provocation could be heard in them. Blair didn't know what kind of beast men made that sound, but she knew it was not a leopard. That roar was deeper and richer than the sound made by leopards, and more imposing. Ignoring that, she finished dotting her face, then took the roasted meat from Roger's hand and started chowing down. When Roger heard the roars, his face turned green and his tail tensed up into a straight rod. Blair glanced at him and asked, What kind of beast men are they? Before Roger could answer, the voice of a woman could be heard outside. Roger, I know you're back. Come out. You know them? Blair slowed down her chewing speed. Your enemies? Roger jeered. Just a bunch of rogues. I'll be right back. Roger then went out. Worried about him, now that her tummy didn't hurt so much anymore, Blair put down her food and used water to clean the bloodstains off her skirt before going out as well. A group of leopard beast men had gathered at the stone castle's entrance, staring warily at the tiger beast men who came with malicious intent. A young female was seated on the back of the largest tiger amongst them. She had a head of dense brownish-red short hair, big eyes, and thick lips, exuding a natural sexiness. However, the most attractive thing about her was flawless skin. Although the leopard beast men were guarded... They couldn't help but sneak glances at her. Seeing Roger come out, her gaze immediately fell upon him. She said with a smile, Roger, you're finally back. Have you decided to be my male? Whoa! Blair let out a gasp at the entrance of the stone castle, surprised that Roger was so popular with the females to have one chase him all the way to his home. Roger said coldly, Even if I remain a bachelor forever, I won't be your male. Moreover, I already have a female. Her? The female tiger glanced at the foreign-looking female standing at the door, and her sexy lips curled up in a jeer. Roger, you actually fell for such an ugly freak? And a filthy one at that? She smudged so much mud on her face. That rubbed Roger the wrong way. His gaze instantly turned ferocious. Tanya, never mind if you schemed against me. Don't you dare try anything with her. Tanya scoffed. Have you forgotten why you were driven out of your family? Why don't I help you refresh your memories? That day at the gathering of the four tribes, you pinned me down on the grass and roughed me up. You ripped off my clothes. All the beastmen there saw that. Her tone then softened and she started sobbing. You've seen all of my body and touched me everywhere. That's why I wanted to take you as my male. But you didn't know what's good for you. No wonder you didn't copulate with me then, you, so you only wanted to toy with me. The speechless Blair felt that this was a lot of information to take in. Tanya's mates got furious. 
They flashed their teeth and howled at Roger, pacing up and down at the entrance of the stone castle, ready for a fight. Roger turned around and glanced anxiously at Blair. He said furiously, "'You're spouting nonsense. You were the one who ripped off your own clothes. I had thought you tripped and fell and wanted to help you get up, but you clung on to me and refused to let go.' Aren't you just eyeing the fact that I became a two-striped beast man right after I came of age? You want to rope me into your tribe to strengthen the power of your tribe. You're evil. No way will I like a female like you. Tanya patted the restless tiger beneath her. I've given you a chance. Since you don't wish to be my mate, are you returning to your leopard tribe now to stir up a battle between the two tribes? She snickered. Don't forget that we, the Tiger Tribe, have two four-striped beasts. Realization dawned on Blair. So this female really schemed against Roger and made him get caught in the act so that she could force Roger to comply with her wishes. Males could only become mates with someone once. If Roger had consented, he could only be devoted towards her, and that would, in turn, make him a beast man of the tiger tribe. A low growl was heard beside Blair. She turned her head sideways and saw that it was Roger's father, the Leopard King. The reason she could recognize him was that the Leopard King was of a much larger size than ordinary leopards, and there was also an unmistakable aura about him. Moira, standing next to the Leopard King, gazed comfortingly at Blair, then said to Tanya, We, the Leopard tribe, are no pushovers. If you wish to battle, let's battle. Mom, no need for that, Roger turned around and said to her. If we go to war, many beastmen will die. The city of beastmen is a unit. We'll just be killing among ourselves. Blair and I will immediately move out. Roger then looked towards Tanya, his voice calm as though he was simply recounting facts. One day I will become a four-striped beast man and make your tribe lose power. Although Roger sounded arrogant, he did have what it took to say something like this. His father was a four-striped beast man, so simply judging from his bloodline, he already showed great potential. Moreover, Roger was also the strongest one among his brothers. He was the only 